Hello, I'm Alex Lafkis. Today, I'm going to talk about streamer presentations. Now, there's a lot of options on how to retrieve your fly, obviously. This is going to be more trout stuff. That's what I've spent the majority of my time doing. Um, I basically look at it like there's, you know, there's obviously a million different ways to retrieve your fly. I'll tell you one way you don't want to do it. You don't want to cast it out there and strip it in and cast it out there and strip it in and just do it like a robot. That's not going to work for you. you got to think a little bit more through your presentation. I see, frankly, I've seen it more from bass and musky guys. They just kind of get in a groove where it's cast and go, cast and go, cast and go. This trout stuff's different, guys. They feed differently. They feed on the paws a lot of the times. Um, they want to feed in the dead drift. That's a brown trout. Sorry. Um, so you've got to incorporate that into your presentation. Um, but there's really... And I guess there's three type of typical presentations I'd use. Um, one that I think that a lot of us use, I don't know, the people who know how to use this technique know how to use it and catch a lot of fish. Russ is good at it. I've done a lot of years of it. You know, it's, it's structure fishing with a jig fly. Now, what a lot of that entails is it's a, kind of a sloppy cast. You know, it's a lot of weight, so smack it on the water. And a lot of what that entails is being able to see in the water, understanding that the sink rate of your fly, where the structure is, and really driving your fly into the dark cuts of the structure. The key with that is it's, it's tight line so that you can always feed in and pull out. So as you feed in, pop it out. As you feed in, pop it out. And that's what I'll do a lot of times. I kind of jig it and pop it. I jig it and strip it at the same time so it'll come up. Then I can let it fall back into the crevice it wants to go in and then just pop it out quick. That little pop, when a fish is laying next to structure and that fly is coming along and it just kind of pop, that will instigate a reaction bite a lot of times. It's that fling of the fly, fling of the fly, bam, they're going to grab on it. I see that happen more in Michigan than I do in Arkansas. Um, I believe in a lot of these rivers, these fish have to be a little bit more opportunistic, a little more aggressive. They sit on a spot, they see that hard pull, they come and grab it. The other thing we have in Michigan and a lot of spots other than Michigan is wood piles. Fish can go into wood piles and hide and then come out. They get a little, uh, they're a little dumber then, you know, that when they're out, they're catchable. You know, you go to a, fish, a river like the Madison or the White or something where the fish really have nowhere to hide. You know, they're kind of out seeing presentations all the time. It changes a little bit and you've got to kind of think about that. Um, but the jig fishing on structure will work a lot. And, and when I say that certain presentations won't work in certain situations, that's usually for bigger fish. Small fish haven't lived long enough to learn anything, so they'll jump on stuff a few times. Now, say you're a 17-inch fish and you bite a chartreuse fly twice in a year that's 8 inches long. Well, your chances of ever biting that again aren't real good. Yeah, you will on occasion, but you've lost the curiosity to chase that. You know, so it's it's more about feeding them with that right fly now, not just jumping them based on the color. Um, so we can do the structure and the jig fly. The in that usually I like to fish that in faster water. I usually use um, less weight in slow water, more weight in fast water. The speed of the current will kind of help you with your presentation there too. Also, when you're in fast water, you don't have to strip as hard. You don't have to do as much effort because the fast water is pushing on it. So it's just a little pop here, a little pop there. And that current's moving that fly. So that, that's enough to get those fish to jump on it a lot of the times. Um, so I do like the jig in current and faster water to penetrate. A lot of times in that fast water, fish will sit on the bottom of a dip or something like that and you want to kind of get down into it. As I start going into slower water, that's when I'm going to like unweighted or just a few lead wraps on the body to fish. Now, in slower, shallow water, I like the two-hand bird. Uh, it's not something I do a ton because I'm usually guiding and, and a lot of clients can't do it. But if you get into one to two foot flats and you can cast, that's the key. You've got to be able to be pushing these flies 70 to 90 feet in order to have a sec uh, success on this stuff. Um, so it's a long bomb cast, boom, right underneath your arm and strip, 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 strip. You want to go fast. I see a lot of people who, you know, go slow to make it look right. I have not had as good luck with that. I see fish follow a nip, follow a nip. The best bites I've had on the two hand burn are you're going as fast as you can. Pop, 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 pop with the rod underneath your arm. And also, whoo, whoo, they just come up and eat it. Whoo, whoo. They'll also swim at you when they eat it on the two-hand strip, and you're going to miss most of those fish because you'll keep stripping and stripping and stripping, and they'll spit it out before you even get tight to them. They'll come at you, eat it, spit it out. 
You just, those fish aren't going to get caught. You want them to come up and down, in and around, something like that. When they eat and come at you, it doesn't matter what you're doing, you're going to struggle hooking them, especially with a fly rod. You can't catch up to them. Um, so the two-hand strip on bigger, slower flats. Now, when I get into slower, deep water, I go slow and I fish deep. Um, I, it seems like those fish aren't really aggressive enough to come up a lot of the times. You know, if they're starving to death, they are. So there's some times of years that, yes, they will do stupid things to eat a fly aggressively. Most of the year, it's not like that way. You kind of got to feed them, especially bigger fish. They do not want to chase. They're smart guys. They have chased stuff their whole life. They're scared of things that move fast now. They know a lot of the stuff that moves fast is either too much effort to eat it or it's not real. Um, I've even talked to the jerkbait guys in Arkansas, and they're like, oh, no, no, you can't just be rip, 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 rip. You won't catch anything doing that. It's just the truth. It's how it is. Um, you can try it all you want, but occasionally you'll see one. You'll see just enough to think that you should keep doing it. Well, that's good. I'll go slow. I'll fish deep. I'll see three in a run compared to a lot of people who see one. You know, I mean, that's just kind of the deal, but you got to understand how to fish it deep. And a lot of that has to do with tension in your line. You always have to have tension in your line because it's you'll never hook a fish if you don't. And it's really about driving the fly. I have a little, I've talked a little bit about this type of presentation too, where you cross the seam going in and you fish each shelf coming out. You know, usually it's going to be shallower your first few steps off the bank, then it's going to get a little deeper, come out. Look, you want to stall that fly to fish deep each time. You're always going to at least split the water column, if not get a little deeper doing that. You want to fish it down deep, you want to fish it slow, you want to drive your fly into the most likely ambush spots. You know, a, a one tree on the bank like that could hold a fish, but this stump out here could hold six. Okay, so yeah, it's important to hit that and you want to hit that. But as you come out, don't rush back to get to the bank. It's not going to do you any good. You're going to catch more fish coming out and continuing your presentation. Um, especially when you talk bigger fish. Small fish use those banks. Big fish tend to sit off an edge unless the water's really high. Then they'll get pushed in there. But you still have to worry about a lot of times those big fish want to follow further than a small fish. So even if a big fish is pinned up on that bank, is he going to come out and track, 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 track all the way? You know, I, yeah, sometimes. Usually they come off something between the bank and the boat, halfway, a third of the way off the bank, something like that. That's where you'll see them more. Get that fly down deeper, you'll get more eats. Um, I see it every year. People are working the fly high, and I'll tell them, you know, get it, you got to get it deeper, got to get it deeper, and they'll fish it back, fish it back, and they'll say, oh, what was that? And I'll tell them that's the reason they should have been deeper. Those big fish do not want to come up through to be seen. So that's a, something I've talked about before, too. You know, that color line in the water where those fish want to stay safe and secure. They know where they can be seen. They've been living in this river their whole life. Um, boom, boom, boom. So you've got to keep that in mind. Keep that fly deep to where the fish are comfortable. They'll eat them more. I mean, you can watch any fish behave in deep water. and You see that they behave more naturally in deep water. Low, clear water, they fish freak out. High, deep, dirty water, they, can, they feel more comfortable. They're safer. So... Fisher's presentation slow, tight line. When you have a tight line on your fly and you're fishing it deep and tight, you'll realize, you know, especially with some of these flies that don't take much work to get action out of them, like the brush heads, you know, you can, if you've got tension, you just kind of strip a little and wiggle, you'll see that fly kick. And that's all you need a lot of the time. Little action, boom, kill it, stall. And those fish can come on it. Slow down. That's the number one thing I would say. Um, if you're not trying to fish fast, 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 slow down. 98% of the people I take fishing fish too fast. They don't think about each cast enough. Um, slow down. Work every spot in your presentation. You will see more fish. You will see bigger fish. You'll save your arm from casting less. Something worth trying. Uh, DM or uh, comments for questions. Hope this helps a little, guys. Thank you.